this thing working? Ugh, Asian eyebrows. Asian eyebrows. What is going on here? Hi, I'm Kamiko from The Budget Mom. Come along with me as I strive to live a life I love on a budget that I can afford. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to close out your budget every single month. So if you're not familiar with my budgeting method, I'm a paycheck budgeter, which means I budget my money every single time I get paid. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I do these huge video recaps and overviews to show you my real values in my budget and how I work a successful budget into real life. And I kind of made my, a promise to myself that this YouTube channel would be more about showing than it is telling. So today, I'm gonna show you how to extract that important information from your budget at the end of the month so you can tweak and perfect your budget as you go along for the future. To be honest, you should be tracking your spending and this is what mine looks like. So I use the highlighter method to track my spending and to categorize my spending every single month. That way I can make the best decision for my dollars. If you're wondering about how I track my spending, I will put a description to a very helpful article in the, or a link to a very dis, um, helpful article in the description of this video. Um, that way you can get a little more familiar if you're wondering like, holy cow, what are all those numbers? And what is, what is going on over there? So this is what we're gonna do. Today I'm gonna do a video tutorial on how to not only categorize your spending, but I don't know if you've ever gotten to the end of the month and you have like all your spending, you know, written down. You're like, well, what do I do with it now? It's just like a whole bunch of line items and transactions going on. What do I do with it? I'm gonna show you what you need to do with that information so you can use it in the best possible way. So let's get started. I try sharing my story to remind readers that there is a way out that with hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, it's all about having a plan for your money. And that's what gives you the true control. Holy crap, it just changed my life. And they're like, oh man, Nico, it takes time, it takes dedication, it takes work. But no more credit card debt. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to close out your expense trackers and your budget for the month. Stay with me. It's a lot. There's a lot to go over. So the first thing that you need to do now, if you are not familiar with how I track my expenses or the Where Did My Money Go worksheets that help you close out your budget at the end of the month, you can find details in the description of this video. But let's get started. So I keep two different expense trackers, one for my checking account, as you can see here, as well as one for my cash spending. So the first thing that you need to do when you're closing out your budget for the month. Now for me, I track my spending from the first of the month to the last day of the month. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to figure out your starting balance for December. So today is December 1st. I'm going to go to my tab in December. I'm going to go to my expense trackers. Here's my, my expense tracker for my cash spending. Now I use the cash envelope method. I'm an all cash spender besides my online bills. My online bills are paid with my checking account online. So as of right now, today, at this second, I have $341 in cash in my cash envelopes. On my checking account, I have $1,225.90. That's what's in my checking account right now, today. So that is your starting balance for December. Anytime you close out your spending for the month, the formula you want to use is starting balance, minus uh, starting balance plus income minus expenses. So if we head back to November, 
you can see that in November I have my starting balances written down. So for my checking account, on November 1st, I had $1,234 in my checking account. On November 1st, I had $186 in my cash envelopes. That's my starting balance for November. Now, to close out your ex expenses and your spending for a month, I recommend, so for me, I like to track where every dollar goes. And I do this by writing down my expenses on these expense trackers. So there are some months where I use multiple pages because I might have a lot of spending going on. So for instance, this checking account expense tracker, I only use one sheet and you can tell that I'm a cash spender because for the entire month of November, this is all that I had in my checking account. This is all the expenses and spending I did for my checking account. Most of it is bills and income hitting my checking account. So for each expense tracker page, I go up here at the top and I categorize my spending. So all of my food purchases are in blue, all of my debt purchases in orange, and so on and so on. So you want to add up each page into categories. Now, everyone's the, the way that people categorize their spending is different for everybody. Everyone does it different. This is how I do it. These are my um, categories for my budget that I like to use. You would do the same thing with your cash expense trackers. See at the top how I went ahead and added all of these different expenses. I grouped them together into categories and I wrote the totals across the top. I did that for each page. For my cash spending, I had two expense trackers. Once you have all of your spending from your expense trackers totaled at the top into your categories, you can use, I have three worksheets called Where Did My Money Go Worksheets that helps you break down and extract the important information from your spending trackers. So here's all of my categories that I use in my budget and I simply got those from what I wrote down here at the top of my expense trackers and I totaled them all up. Now, your total monthly income is going to be your starting balance plus any incoming income for the month. That is your total monthly income. So, remember how I showed you my starting balances? Starting balances. So that's your starting balances plus any income that you have coming in for the month. Do you see all these different income that I tracked for the month of November, that's your income, your incoming income for November. So if you add those together, my income was $6,244.78. I went and then, so I also assign monthly budget for each of my categories. I am a paycheck budgeter, which means I do a budget every single time I get paid, which is twice a month. It's on the 5th and the 20th, but I do assign a monthly amount for each category. I then wrote down how much I actually spent for that category, and was I over or under for my budget, my monthly budget for that category. So as you can see, for my food budget, if it's in black, I was under budget for the month. If it's in red, I was over budget in that category. And then I went ahead and, now you get these totals, these monthly spending totals from your expense trackers for what you totaled up here at the top for each page. I then like to know how much of my income for the month and what percentage is it being used for each category. So for instance, 5% of my food 5% of, uh, sorry, 5% of my budgeted income was spent on food. 14% was spent on debt. Now, you might say, why are these zero? It's because I, on I only spent nine bucks out of my miscellaneous budget. It's under a percent, so I just rounded these down. So, it's very important that when you're looking at this page, you also include your December starting balance because that needs to be a category in your budget because your income minus your expenses should equal zero, especially if you're doing a zero-based budget. Do you see how my income and my expenses, these are all my expenses added together equal my income. That's a great way to know if you track your spending correctly. But do you see if I got rid of this December starting balance, if I got rid of that line, 
I'd be $1,568 short because I have money that's still left in my cash envelopes and my checking account at this exact moment. And I'm going to be using that money in December to pay for bills and some spending. So it needs to be included in your budget categories. So that's how you fill out the monthly budget category breakdown. It's great to know if you want to know exactly where your money is going, which is going to help you assign realistic and accurate totals for your budget, this is what you need to do. If you're wondering, well, what should my food budget be for a month? Or maybe how much should I set aside for fun expenses? This is a great way. You need to track your spending to figure out what are you realistically spending in those categories. And then if you do this for a couple of months, you can then say, okay, well, you know what? It looks like I'm spending about $300 a month on food. Let's go ahead and sign $300 for my budget. I can increase or decrease that as I go along. But you need to have a realistic starting place for your budget. The next worksheet is the monthly debt and savings breakdown. Now, this is one of my favorite worksheets because it allows you, especially if you have goals, if you have savings goals or debt goals and you want to know, is my spending aligning with my goals? Because I'll tell you what, your spending will tell you so much about yourself, it's ridiculous. So for example, in the month of November, I put $849 of my income towards debt. But I want to know what debt exactly am I paying off? Where is my dollars going? Where am I prioritizing my debt payments? So for me, I only have two debts. I have my student loans and I have my car. $500 of this $849 went towards student loans. 300, about $350 went towards my car payment, which means 59% of, my, of, my, of the money that I put towards debt went to student loans. 41% went to my car. And that's very accurate because right now my student loans are a priority. Now you can do the same thing with your savings. And this is wonderful because I don't want to know just how much a month I'm saving. I want to know what am I saving for? What are my true priorities when it comes to savings? Now, out of the $748 that I put towards savings, which was 12% of my income, I save for these things, okay? Now, obviously, for my 401k contribution was the most that was spent for my savings contributions and followed by, I have business taxes, um, a business tax savings account for my business that I use some personal money to add to my savings account for that. I save for vacation, medical. Now, medical is meant for um, deductibles and things that my insurance does not cover. You know, when you go to the doctor, you have a $30 copay that, or, you know, that you have to pay. That's what that medical account is for. It's for those small um, expenses that my medical insurance does not cover. I'm saving for New Year's, Valentine's, and Christmas. Now, these are my sinking funds. Sinking funds are just a, literally a savings goal that you save a little bit every month to reach or to spend on a specific purpose. So for me, I like to make sure that my holidays and events for the future are saved for with cash. That way I'm not tempted to use my credit cards. I'll have the cash saved already. Now, I hit my Christmas goal this year in fact, that money gone. I already spent that money. My Christmas shopping is done for this month. A month ahead of time. I'm a month ahead of schedule. So that is wonderful. But you get to see what are you saving for? For me, my 401k contributions out of my personal income is what's important to me. And you can see that because that's where most of my, uh, the biggest chunk of my savings went. So that's how you fill out the monthly debt and savings breakdown worksheet. It's wonderful to make sure that your goals and your spending is aligning with those goals. It's also great just to know where, you know, how much are you putting towards that? How much are you putting towards saving? I love it. I love knowing that stuff. The next worksheet is the monthly spending comparison. Now, this is another one of my favorite worksheets because it allows you to compare your spending from last month to this month. 
So for instance, and I'm sorry if this is shaking, I'm holding my dang phone here. So in the month of October now, if you're just starting out with tracking your spending, it's okay if you don't have some of this information. Like you might not have last month's spending. That's fine. Just fill out for this month and then next month you will have this information to use on your worksheets. Now you might be wondering, why is there such a drastic decrease in my income? So if you are an Instagram follower, you know that I used to include the money that I used for my business for personal things like paying off debt or savings. And I told you I was no longer going to include my business income in my personal budget recaps or my details because I really want you guys to see what my life looks like without my business income. So... Because I am no longer using my business income, and my income did decrease this month, but this will be more accurate what's going on with my personal money. So in the month of October, here's what I spent. Here's what I spent in November. Now, the great thing about this worksheet is I allow you to put in your change of dollars. So in for the month of November, I spent $358 less than I did in October, and I did that because I'm doing a November um, savings challenge where I only eat what's or what I already have at home from my pantry and freezer. I am not doing grocery trips this month for my meal plan, and I did that because I had a goal of saving over $300 in food costs in the month of November. I hit my goal. I saved over $350 in food costs. Now, my debt, you can see, is drastically um, different. It's a lot smaller because I am not including that business income. But with my personal income from my day job, I was able to put $849 to debt. If it's in red, I spent less this month than I did last month. If it's in black, I spent more this month than I did last month. Do you want to know why this worksheet is important? One of the main reasons we track our spending is to figure out what are our problem areas. Where are we spending money that we can possibly decrease in the future? Now, if you are on a very tight budget and you're finding it hard to make it month to month, this is important because this will allow you to say, oh my gosh, look how much my food costs increased this month. Well, maybe I can just decrease that cost to give me a, lo- a little bit more leeway in my budget. It's a great way to see how your spending is changing from month to month and identify those problem areas. So the first thing and the most important thing when it comes to tracking your spending is making sure that your starting balance is accurate because, and I'll give you a great way to know if you're filling this all out correctly. And k- stay with me because it's going to get a bit confusing, but your November closing balance, okay, your November closing balance should equal your December starting balance. And here's what that looks like. And there's a couple ways to check if you're doing this correctly. Now, maybe you're not sure, well, did I track my spending correctly? I don't know if I wrote that expense down right. You can, there's ways to check. Make sure that your expenses, if you add up all of your expenses and your starting balance for the new month, it equals your total income for the month. These two should be the same. That's a great indicator to make sure that you track your expenses correctly. Another way to check is to make sure you did your work correctly on the monthly debt and savings breakdown. If you add up everything you paid toward debt, if you're breaking your debt down into further categories, Did these two things equal the amount of my total debt payoff? They do. You can do the same thing for savings. When you break down your savings, okay, now if you're wondering, well, how do you know how much you save for each of those different things? They're in my expense trackers. For instance, here's a great example. Do you see how I have all these different savings in my Expense tracker, this is where I'm pulling my information. You are going to pull everything from your expense trackers. So just make sure when you add all these up, they equal your total monthly savings. Now with this and figuring out whether or not 
you are doing things correctly. Let me show you. I got some sticky notes here to show you. Now, remember when I said the formula that you want to use when you're closing out your expense tracker or budget for the month is starting balance plus incoming income minus expenses. Get the three parts of this formula down first. Once you have the three parts of the formula, you can start working out the equation. So my starting balance plus income equals the $6,244 minus all of my expenses for the month. Now that's literally all of my different expenses on my expense tracker that I um, t totaled up here at the top all your expenses that you track throughout the month. And if you total them at the top, it's a lot faster and a lot easier to, to um, total up all your expenses. Make sure that way you're not at the end of the month going through every single expense. You can just go off the totals up here at the top. But if you take my starting balance plus my income minus my expenses, I'm left with $1,568.90. Now, you might be asking, well, is that the right, is, is, is this total the right thing? Am I coming up with the right number? Here's a great way to check. Right now, as of today, on December 1st, I have $1,225 in my checking. I have $341 still left in my cash envelopes as of today, right now. That means I have $1,566.90. This is the starting balance for December. On December 1st, your starting balance is what's in your checking account and your cash envelopes as of today, December 1st. Now, didn't we say that your November closing balance, which is this right here, your closing balance is your starting balance plus income minus your expenses for the month. Our closing balance for November was this. And I said it should equal your December starting balance, which is this. I'm off by two bucks not going to worry about the two bucks. And let me tell you, when you're doing this, don't get caught up on a few dollars. Move on. And it's okay if it's off by a couple of dollars. Don't get stuck on just making this exactly, exactly perfect. Now, in a perfect world, these should match. I'm not going to worry about the two bucks. So that's how you know if you're doing it correctly. Know that formula, because this formula is going to give you your closing balance for the month um, that you're working in, and then you can check it against your current balance for what you have going on on the first of the month. Now remember, I close, I track my spending from the first to the end of the month. Now, if you get paid on the 20th of every month, and your month is from the 20th to the 20th, that's okay. Just make sure your starting balances are correct on the 20th, the day, or the day after that you're closing out your budget or expense trackers. So this is how you go ahead and close and use your expense tracker to extract this helpful information. And you might be saying, well, this is a lot of information. Why is it so important? Because your spending, tracking your spending is literally the most important step that you can use for creating a realistic budget. Because if you just go out there and assign dollar values to your budget without truly knowing what's going on with your personal spending, your budget's going to fail every time because you may only want to spend $200 a month on food, but if your spending is telling you you're realistically spending $500, it's going to be very, very hard for you to stick to that $200 limit that you're assigning. It has to be based on where your dollars are actually going. So if you have any questions on this, I'll put a link. I have a private Facebook community strictly for TBM re readers, um, and we answer. There's a, I'm in there. I'm answering questions. Completely supportive, motivating group. We talk a lot about my different video tutorials over there. If you found this video helpful, please share it, and don't forget to subscribe.